but qualifying results are now on the screen. Mitchell McLeod is your pole man for split two. VH Scops at Mateki, presented by West End Mazda. Benjamin J. Smith in second, Edward Van Bels in third. Paul Jones in fourth, Will Dodd completing the top five with Ryan Bodley, Gary Cooper, Tommy Harradine, Martin Carroll, and Stephen Lattimore um, rounding out the top ten. Um, From 11th to 20th, we have Daniel Trim, Nathan Tregarthen, Shannon Mason, Wayne Taylor, Harley Haber, Brett Loxton, Ryan Shelton, Brenton O'Brien, Simon Pitt, and then Braden Bateman. Connor McCluskey Young in 21st position with Matt Muggleton in 22nd. Lewis Cougarly 23rd with Wayne Pendulee in 24th. 25th to 30th is Alex Greenwood, David Kinmond, Jamie McKnight of West End Mazda, Paul Preston, and Shane Rayner, and Sanjin Delalik, a name that we haven't seen in a while, rounding out the top 30. Then going back to the final five positions, Corey Ott sits 31st. 32nd will be Damon Mulqueen. 33rd will be Cody Bircher. 34th will be Tyler Blackburn, and rounding out the 35th position will be Glenn Brockhurst. Good luck, <laughs> Pretty much run at a racetrack fairly quickly. Mm. Good luck, but otherwise, I can definitely see people yeah, luck, possibly you. making moves up the inside here to try and gain as many positions as possible early on. Yeah, certainly will. About 30 seconds to go until the red lights come up and we'll be ready to go racing here at Motegi. Mitchell McLeod is the position one man. He's at the crest of that hill. You can't actually see much of the first turn from the start-finish line. So it'll be ad-lib city for all of these guys, all 35 of these drivers as they come down to turn one. So the clock has run out, and now, time to get ready to go. Revs are going to rise, and we've got yeah, a green flag. Excellent start from McLeod. Oh, have a look at the jump back Ooh, in the people. field. Who's that? Oh, that's oh, on! Someone's returned before he gets already. to turn one. Oh, there's oh. a big pile up. Yeah, huge, huge crash here, and we might be seeing more, oh, more people going off. Oh no! Oh, multiple, oh, this multiple job. cars off. Oh, Ryan Shelton involved in that, as are a few other drivers getting ready to. Oh no! I think we're seeing even more carnage as they come through the chicane, or at the very least, uh, cars jostling for position. Well, I can't say that start was unexpected, Cam. Yeah, it kind of was oh, God, leave it. look at another Watch car a very hands. spectacular incident oh, is that that was wayne pendulee smashing into the wall tyler blackburn off as well goodness me well that's gonna require quite the replay cam let's have a look at what happened coming down to turn one i saw someone getting a jump and then getting turned around it looks like that was ryan bodily getting a massive start for all star motorsports but then he, uh, he took to the pit exit, and it looked like Benjamin Smith just uh, turned him around. I'm not sure how much of that was to do with Benjamin Smith not giving room, or bodily just uh, turning back onto the racetrack a little too early. But either way, certainly not what you want to see. No, um, definitely. He just went right across the racetrack, and multiple cars involved in that incident. And mind you. It started a chain reaction that continued for the next couple of corners. Yeah. We've got more than a few cars in the pits. That's Buddley there, Ryan Shelton, and Pendulee, who spun at pit entry, uh, making an already bad race even worse for himself, unfortunately. But we're back live, and McCluskey Young and Wayne Taylor currently involved in a battle. Well, actually, uh, it's more of Wayne oh, Taylor being yeah have a look at bateman there on the outside of taylor and have a look behind them alex greenwood and simon pitt going too wide into the hairpin so it looks like alex greenwood has been able to get that move done so yeah, way taylor mate, now facing a lot of pressure from Braden bateman owen taylor's blinking as well that's not going to look good for bateman no it's not very ideal when someone's blinking around you so hopefully it doesn't last too long and his connection stabilizes. Looks like Wayne Taylor just let Bateman through on the outside, so Bateman 
gives chase to McCluskey Young. So Shane Rayner, meanwhile, down in the field. We're looking at uh, just outside the top 20. Have a look at him going too wide with Cody Bircher down the front stretch. Bircher's going to have the inside line for this turn one, but is he going to be brave enough to attempt to move up the inside here? Looks like they're going to stay level, and Bircher is going to hold the inside. Rayner gives him room, and Rayner runs off the track a little bit as a result, so he's lost two positions out of that one. Meanwhile, Will Dodd, Benjamin Smith, and Tommy Harradine. These guys are battling for third, so... Wow, that's quite the train behind them. So it's Dodd, Smith, Harradine, and then you've got Lattimore and Jones behind them. And catching up rather rapidly is Shannon Mason. Yeah, indeed. So it's about to become a six-car battle for the final spot on the podium. Yeah. Oh, have a look at Smith. Oh, think he oh just that's the thing. Oh, and Dodd's going to go off. Oh, no. That's a real shame. Either Dodd break a little early for Smith, or Smith uh, missed his breaking point. Either way, that's put Will Dodd right to the back of that train. And have a look just in front of them. Stephen Lattimore going wide. Will Jones almost made the move there, but it looks like Lattimore had the run down the front stretch. Aradine's going to make a move here as well. Yeah, have a look at this. West End Mazda Racing. Oh! Hits Smith on the outside. So, looks like Smith and Dodd are back together now. <laughs> Indeed. I think a lot of those guys might be getting caught out by that dirt on the racing line as they head into turn one from that earlier lap one incident, possibly. as Stephen Lattimore passes Tommy Harradine, and it looks like, oh, just behind them, we had a massive, massive lunge from Daniel Trim. But fortunately, no one has come away with anything bad from that. So well done by all drivers involved in that to keep it all recovered. And it looks like Smith just lunges up the inside of Trim, and they're going to go side by side through the S. But gonna unfortunately... Hold just going to hold on to it. Yeah, oh, there's a little bit of contact as well. Yeah, Smith's getting quite liberal with the uh, with the contact in this race so far. He's definitely got the elbows out. Oh, we'll have a look. Trim's going to try and send it back up the inside. Smith is going to see him coming and give him room. Fortunately, these are touring cars, so you can afford a little bit of biffo here and there, but they're going very close down the front stretch. This, this battle is quite fun, actually. Looks like Trim is just going to break a little bit earlier than Smith. Oh, oh no, he's tagged him in the back. A bit of a tap. Oh, oh no, I think that's Harley. He's going to try to go inside. Not yeah, what but he's wow. possibly going to get a move done Came here. Up the back. Yeah. yeah, carrying a Came bit up. of damage as well on that front end by the looks of it. Yeah, quite a bit. All trim, just losing control of the car a little bit through that fast chicane. And Haber is just weaving around behind trim. Three wide just oh, behind him. Geez. Oh, goodness. Brett Loxton versus McCluskey Young. McCluskey's going to go onto the grass on exit. That's going to... Oh, it almost left the door open for Matt Muggleton, but he decided to fall back and have a look now at Braden Bateman, who goes past Muggleton. Muggleton is a lap down, we're hearing, so he's just letting all of these guys by. So the gap for the lead up front is closing. Edward Van Belsen and Mitch McLeod, they raced each other in the Formula Renault 2.0 series on Wednesday night, so um, they've certainly, they're certainly familiar with each other, so who knows, we might see them have a fun battle in V8 supercars as well. Yeah, indeed, and it's always good to race similar guys, see, as it helps to, helps you to have confidence in knowing what the guy is going to do and how he's going to react to moves and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, certainly. 22, Having 14, a look at the time sheets, it looks mate. like Stephen Lattimore in third. Wow, what a gain from him Car for race on rolls. He started 10th and he's now up into third. So he's really benefited from all of that uh, carnage in the opening laps. Yeah, he definitely has. And it also looks like a number of guys have as well with likes of... Oh no, Will Dodd's off track, sorry. Oh. So... Not too sure what happened there. It looked like it was just a simple mistake. It 
So, some more jostling back in the pack. Tommy Harradine has run wide, and that's brought Paul Jones right up to the back of them once again. What a oh another battle that we should be watching is Wayne Taylor. He's having quite the battle with Braden Bateman at the moment. They just went side by side through the hairpin, and Bateman has got the run. See if Wayno tries to send one up the inside into turn one. It looks like he is going to hold back. But Simon Pitt just behind them. Oh, as we see Taylor just losing the rear once again. Looks like his car is very nervous through this section of the track. Large yeah. amount of sliding. Yeah, possibly a little bit too much rotation in the car, possibly, but maybe a little bit too heavy on the right, right pedal, but we have to see what happens. Yes, indeed. Well, now a three-car train has formed with uh, Tommy Harrodine, Paul Jones, and Shannon Mason, so... Mason looking very racy, taking those tighter lines into corners behind Jones, and Jones has run wide here. But interestingly, if you have the wider line here at Motegi, then you're able to get on the throttle just a little bit earlier on exit, and you're able to maintain position. So Stephen Lattimore is not facing much pressure from these guys. He can just manage his race. And these guys are on lap 8 now, so the pit window has opened. Yeah, it has actually, so it'll be interesting to see who pits when as... I think the overcut might be a possible strategy here, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see how these guys go with their time. So Sanjin Dalalek is currently in the gravel trap down at turn 1, I'm not sure how that eventuated. It looks like... Uh, well, so I got that on replay. Yeah, I think it was just a case of breaking too late. Chris Cropper, Chris Cropper. Yeah, possibly, although it didn't look like he struggled to really pull it up, so I'm not sure what's happened there. Making work for it. Yeah, that's a, that's a very odd thing to see. Come on, Cody. Big wait. Looks like Sanjin is out of the race. Jamie McKnight on screen right now. Just past David Kinman as they go through the S. Looks like McKnight. Sorry, Paul Jones and Tommy Harradine going side by side. And Harradine uh, move not quite done um, yet, I think, it. because Harradine has a little bit of a draft. Behind. Jones is going to leave him a car's width of room on the outside. little bit of oversteer from Jones, but he's managed to maintain position just ahead of Paradine. So that's Paul Jones to fourth. Tell you what, Tommy, Aradine's not I'll letting him quite get away with it just yet, though. No, it's not all oh, big moment there for him. He's but... done that a couple of times, as Tommy. Yeah, he has. Uh, possibly struggling with a little bit of oversteer, or just possibly not having, well, possibly used his tyres up a little bit too much at the moment for the stage in the race, but not sure. But yeah, he's not going to give up too easy by the looks of it. He's going to want to try his best to get back that fourth position. He's the closest right up under brakes there. Yeah, he's he's got a lot of confidence in the front end of his car, taking those really tight lines into the corners, especially in that S-Bend section of the track. So, Paul Jones now is the cork in the proverbial bottle from uh, from fourth back, all the way down to Smith and possibly Trim as well, who is regaining some time. Defend, defend, defend. And we've got our first driver into the pits. That's Cody Bircher coming into the pits for West End Master Racing. 
You're blocking. It's insane, Harley. So, I believe that is the Same first scheduled pit stop in the field right now. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, that's the first scheduled pit stop in the field right Well, the top two have pulled away massively. Looks like Van Belsen has just been just been keeping Mitch McLeod in his sights. But the gap back to Lattimore is quite large. So it's from fourth back where the racing really is at the moment. Yeah, it seems oh, to be at the moment. As, yeah, as Jones, I just noticed, ran wide. And Harradine, another big slide. He's going to let Shannon Mason through on the inside at the hairpin. But can Harradine yeah, hold the outside? It is possible to do at this hairpin, but it looks like he just didn't have the mid-corner grip. Oh, look at him on exit, though. He's going to try Ooh, and come back. Run. Yeah, very good run, but I don't think it'll be enough. Smith's Pross, we're going to have a look here as well, so you have to be conscious of that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Smith moving to the inside of Harradine here, and he is going to go to the inside. So that's a position gained for Shannon Mason and a position gained for Benjamin Smith. And two, unfortunately, lost Boy. there for Tommy, so, yeah. Tell you what, another interesting battle happening further back in the field is 11th back. That's uh, Harley Haber with Brenton O'Brien okay, and then Shannon Mason, well, sorry, <laughs> making another move or, or having a move to the on. There. Oh, dear. That's, yeah, man, really, that, that's really a really challenging turn to go side-by-side side side through in any but car, but in a V8 supercar, certainly. Massive, massive commitment required for that. Yeah, definitely. It's very hard to go around the outside of the air, and if you can hold it, it's very impressive. Yes, indeed. Well, flat times are identical. Meanwhile, Carradine going into the pits, but 11th back is an absolutely fantastic train we're seeing. We've got Harley Haber here with Brenton O'Brien, Connor McCluskey-Young. Oh, little little contact noise as I heard there. So we're mm. getting a little uh, a little feisty, these Harley. guys. Yeah, a couple of these guys. Oh, oh. that's a big block. Hello. <laughs> Bit of Euro F3 blocking going on there. Can Bridget O'Brien take it on the outside? No, he can't. Sweden, Sweden. Wow. So, Harley Haber really blocking hard here. Right. He's right. definitely being very aggressive here. here, trying to hold oh, to that top 10 position. McCluskey, Young, and Bateman. Looks like Bateman is going to try and make the move on McCluskey. He's going to do it. Wow, yeah, behind like them, Simon Pitt and Paul Preston having a massive battle, and Wayne Taylor continuing his run of bad luck. He's just run out of the grass behind them. Meanwhile, Smith and Mason still raging on. Yeah. Oh, fantastic racing here. This is for fifth position. So this is a bit of a scintillating three-car battle we got going here. All three drivers trying different things. Shannon Mason just moving to the inside slightly. He's got... It, that's performing double function. It's defend, letting defend, Smith defend, know defend. he's there and also letting Trim behind him know that he isn't just going to let him by. What a dog. Fucking. Fucking. Come out of this chicane. Looks like... Mason got a way better exit than Smith did. He's going to try and go up the inside, but Smith is too late on the brakes for himself and oh, Mason. Oh, he slides and lets them both through. Yeah, definitely. Piers, Brenton O'Brien has also managed to get past Harley Haber just earlier in the lap as well, after a bit of blocking and... Elbows out, oh, sort of racing one, going yeah. on between the two. And Haber has just let Braden Bateman by too late. as well. Oh, I've already got damage from you. Thanks for anyone. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting Push on, from Jake. Harley. 
looks like he's breaking a little early for McCluskey Young's tastes because <laughs> he was nearly rear-ended. McCluskey goes to the pits to get out of this mess. And Paul Preston passing Simon Pitt just behind them. So now this uh, Simon Pitt was staying with for the moment. Oh, so close to getting into the back of Ooh. Paul Preston. Oh boy. <laughs> and Matt Muggleton is right behind them. Matt Muggleton's still a lap down on these guys, but nonetheless, he does show himself to be off the same pace, if not slightly better than these guys. He's might be a couple of laps down at the moment, but he's still doing pretty all right at the moment. Meanwhile, Haber and Preston side by side. So it looks like Haber is still ahead of Preston. Meanwhile, Van Belsen in the pits. So that's the the first of the top guys to take that chance. Just throw him up out of last Oh corner. no, Daniel Trim and Benjamin Smith just crashing there. Oh no. So we got a replay coming up of that right now. We'll see what happened there. Uh, it looks like looked like um, a double sort of incident. Trim going to pass Mason and just made contact with him, sliding in the middle of the corner. And as Trim was recovering, Smith tried to go up the inside on exit, but didn't have enough room. So that's one hell of a T-bone, Smith on Trim. So they both awkwardly managed to get going, keeping their rear ends under control. And they're back, ro they're back racing. So, back live once again. We've got 11 cars in the race still have yet to pit. Yeah, so Van Belsen has, uh, has come out in traffic, line, it seems. Mate. He's just going past Paul Preston now. Large amount of pace difference, it seems, between those guys. I'm not sure if they've taken tyres in this race. You're or if it's 15, just a fuel stop. 15. I guess it depends on when you stop, really. I mean, probably if you're going to do the earlier stop you'd probably want fresher tires as Mitch McLeod comes in a bit late but yeah. um yeah it's gonna be interesting to see who takes tires and who opts to not as tires may start to take or well, play a bit of a role later in this race yeah this track and McLeod is currently right, away on, and man. he's and just come out with Brenton O'Brien who Stays wide to the cloud through. Chief, so oh, big the incident behind them. That's Van Belsen behind yeah, them. So, oh, I think any hope that Van Belsen had of trying to challenge McLeod for the race win is gone right there. Wow, what a shame. I think that's just a case of, of bad timing there, McLeod Van Belsen. Oh, looks like... Um, looks like he got blocked by Haver there. And... Oh, uh, yeah. Not too sure that that was quite warranted by Haver, blocking Van Belsen there. Of course, it wasn't what sent Van Belsen off, but nonetheless... Might have, might have been a little extreme, in my opinion. Yeah, probably just slightly too aggressive for blocking at the moment. Yeah, especially when that car's just done its pit stop and it's the guy who's an effective second. Yeah, definitely. And Benjamin Smith is now out of the race. Back live, Paul Jones has your race lead as it stands at the moment. Mitch McLeod has made his way back up to second already. Brenton O'Brien in third on track at the moment, but he has yet to take his pit stop, as has Bateman. Meanwhile, Haber and Preston. So Preston oh, almost, uh, almost passing Haber. It looks like Haber is very gentle on his brakes. And that's catching out some of the guys behind him who really like to brake nice and hard into the turns. So 
now. Preston, have a look at how much more aggressive he is into the turns. Haber's getting all of his work done on the exit. He's not pushing the front in the turns at all. Always Haber slides. Ben Benelson also trying to get a move done on Preston here as well. And Haber is going to go to the pits. And so Steve Preston Steve. won't have to worry about Haber's blocking this time around. What's your man? What's your man? So three cars left to pit in this race. What as we see say? Van Velsen trying to get past Preston once again into turn one. He had the look, but was not quite far up enough to get the move done. Paul Jones still yet to pit. And Mitch McLeod with an incredible race, uh, effective race lead. And meanwhile, Stephen Lattimore making moves and almost catching Van Belsen. Paul Jones has to pit now. This is the final lap of the pit window is open, and he does. Pits at the last possible moment. So that's going to let Mitch McLeod back through to the race lead. Have a look, though, at Lattimore as Pitt goes to the pits as well. So the field is now cleansed. The battle for second is going to be won between Edward Van Velsen and Simon Pitt. Uh, Edward Van Velsen and uh, Stephen Lattimore, sorry, I got my names mixed up there. Tommy Harradin and Sharon Ma Shannon Mason, <laughs> meanwhile. Very, very close, these guys. guys. Cars number 38 and 55, West End Master Racing versus Pro Force Racing. Paradine once again pushing his car to the absolute limit through those fast chicane sections. And now Paul real Jones, bad. we're hearing, may have gotten a slowdown. Oh, there you go. He's now behind Brett Loxton. Of course, Cam, it's quite easy to get a slowdown around here, especially through that double chicane section. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to be taking too much grass through there, so just take enough and you'll be fine. If you take too much, you'll be having to get on the anchors to let that slow down get out of there. Yeah, talking about getting on the anchors, how about Shannon Mason? He's really pushing it in his battle with Tommy Harradine. He's gaining yeah, so he's much time very, on their trick. Watch very strong the brakes by the looks of it. The kid yeah, with no eyes. I wonder if he'll try and he's make coming. a move at turn one. He's going to get back in and uh, going, get a bit of a draft here. He's having a look once again up the inside. And, oh, have a look. Yep. This is the move. And is he going to pull it up? Only just. Haradine is going to maintain the position. Or is he? He's going to try and go side by side. Haradine off the track. Wow. So that is going to get Shannon Mason the position, or is it? Oh, goodness Ooh. me. They're kind of falling over each other, these guys, but good driving nonetheless to stay nice and clean. Yeah, good little battle. Well, that's resulted in Shannon Mason getting the position of a very long and protracted battle over about five corners. Meanwhile... Red Loxton and Paul Jones. Remember, Jones was a position ahead of Loxton. After having gotten that slowdown, he's looking to get back past. And Loxton, oh, hello. Not quite sure what happened there. It looked like both of them made a mistake there. But meanwhile, the battle for second as well is still on. So Van Belsen and Lattimore involved in a fight for the last spot on the podium. And it looked like Van Belsen just overshot turn one a little bit. That's allowed Lattimore to get up to him.
If he can get a good run here, which it looks like he has, he might stand a chance at the end of the straight here. Yeah. And a warning has been given to Harley Haber by Race Control for his blocking on lap 16. Yep, that's uh, well deserved, I think, after how much he's been doing more or less double movement in the past few laps. Yes, indeed. Of course, Harley Haber is a Formula 4 driver in real life, so it is sort of the tendency of, of real-life yeah, races to be quite aggressive in sim racing, mate. but nonetheless, Baby. rules are rules, and we've got to respect them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's... Obviously, there's less risk in a simulator, but, I mean, rules are rules yeah, at the end of the day. I mean, you can't expect to game. be treated, especially if, you're, if you're, you're an actual racing game. driver, whether you're a simulator driver, so... We all have to follow, follow the same rules, and that's the way it is. Yes, indeed. Uh, meanwhile, Tommy Harradine and Shannon Mason got uh, crossed up, it seems. So Mason has now fallen behind Will Dodd, who is making uh, a bit of a comeback, as it were. Yeah, definitely. He's slowly but surely been coming through the field after those earlier incidents, but he's been doing quite well, nevertheless. Yep, certainly has. Van Belsen and Lattimore, meanwhile, I think Lattimore's going to... Oh, he's so close to making a move on Van Belsen into those hairpins. We're only six laps from the end now. It's good to see these yeah, guys having the a battle that they are because they're from two teams that you wouldn't necessarily count among the quote unquote big teams hey, in the Australian and New Zealand iRacing community. Edward Van Belsten of Real Parody Motorsports and Lattimore for Race on Oz, two lesser known teams that nonetheless have their fair share of skilled drivers and clean drivers as well. It's fantastic to see that this battle has gone on for as long as it has without either driver making a mistake and taking both of them out. Touch wood, but uh, I don't think I'll have to do that with these guys. They've certainly shown their worth as drivers. Yeah, definitely. They've both driven very well tonight by the looks of it. And as you said, they may be in a small team, but they're definitely showing how good of a driver they are. And should the opportunity arise to join a higher team, it, I would say that we're going to definitely see some absolute awesome results from them in the future. Yeah, well, who knows? They might stay with their current teams and make them one of the top teams. That would be fantastic to see as well. Yeah, we'll do that. So, yeah, it's always good to see guys progressing and also teams as well. So that's the main thing to look at. Yes, it is. But Paul Jones having a little bit of a run on Brett Loxton, not able to get past him still at the moment. Up on Paul tape. Jones, another real parody motorsport okay, driver, and Brett Loxton for KRF Motorsports. Have a look at Jones taking a much more direct line to the apex of that corner, but they're both staying around the same line here. A little bit of a wider exit from Loxton, though. That sort of crossed him up a little bit. Oh, here we go. Loxton's gone wide. Should get the drive though, and he'll have the inside line into the final corner. He's actually going to probably be able to get to the outside of here. Yes, he is. Yep, good racing between these guys as well, almost bumper to bumper. Ooh, might have a bit of a run here, Jones. He's going to go for the move on the inside, but oh, almost losing control. He's managed to keep it out of the rear of Loxton. Good to see. Have a look at them through here, though. You can really see different approaches through this double chicane section because there's quite a few lines through here that you can use, and both of them having to wrestle with their cars through those last couple of turns. Down in the field, I can see another battle developing between Daniel Trim and Brenton O'Brien. These guys quite close at the moment. And just in front of them is the battle between Mason and Dodd. So, with this stop, with the, with the pit stops, the fields spread out a bit, but we've seen drivers sort of recluster into groups of two, so... 
That's pretty good to see. Basically, everywhere you look, there's a two-car battle going on somewhere. Except for at the front, because Mitch McLeod is ten and a half seconds or thereabouts ahead of second place. An absolutely Teddy dominant Mark performance from McLeod so far. Of course, he has been helped by not being involved in as many incidents as, as other drivers in the field, but nonetheless, that's part of the complete skills of a racing driver in any form, be it real life or sim. Yeah, definitely. Nelson and Lattimore yeah. still. Looks like oh, Lattimore gaining massively under brakes. Wrestling with his car once again, he's just not able to get the power down as well as Van Belsen does. He might be just slightly struggling with his tyres at this point, possibly. He might just need to possibly make the likes of an anti roll bar change to the rear just so he can get that power down a little bit better. But yeah, you have to see what happens here. It looks like Van Velsen has got the measure of him so far. We've only got a few laps left. When they cross the line here, it will be two to go. So Lattimore's going to be running out of chances to get second place as we see a car coming out of the pits behind them. Who's that? It's Wayne Pendulli. Meanwhile three-car battle we're seeing developing. Tommy Harradine's dropping back a bit, and that's bringing Dodd and Mason up to the back of him, so not much time left in this race, but it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. So one and a half laps from the end, Van Velsen and Lattimore still locked together. Lattimore once again on exit. He's he's he just hasn't got the rear grip in that car. Oh, meanwhile, Van Velsen, huge slide, huge slide. Oh. Wow, that turn is so close to flat out. Okay, it's, it's tempting to go completely flat out, but see as Van Velsen found out. Oh, oh Van no, Velsen, no. he's starting to have problems with his rear end as well. Yeah, these guys are gonna have to be careful here. Yeah, they don't want to throw away a position. Both of them wrestling with the rear ends of their cars. Have a look at Lattimore, he's having a little bit of a look up the inside of Van Velsen, but he pulls out coming into the final hairpin. A little more oversteer at the apex for Van Velsen, and now down the straight they go, they're going to get white flag this time by. Mitch McLeod is already well ahead, he's just come out of turn one. I think it's fair to say he's probably got the wind wrapped up and in the bag here. Yeah, certainly. But... Van Belsen and Lattimore. This battle for the final two spots on the podium has been where it's at for these last couple of laps. It looks like Lattimore's just fallen back a bit from Van Belsen. And Paul Jones and Brett Loxton is uh, spread out as well. I think Paul Jones I think might, Paul have might be running low on fuel because he's slowed up a huge amount compared to what it was on the last lap. Yeah, certainly. Will Dodd and Shannon Mason are still close yeah, together no, as well. However, as we're coming down. into the final corner, Mitch McLeod is going to round the final hairpin and take victory here. I mean, I don't really know what else can be said. An absolutely fantastic performance from McLeod here in split two. Another dominant victory. He's going to cross the line to take the win for Talk Inc. in V8 Scott split two. Van Belsen and Lattimore, though, it's still not done. I think that right there might be the end of it. Van Belsen just getting out of the final corner a little better, and he's going to take second ahead of Stephen Lattimore. Brett Loxton coming out of the final turn to take a well-deserved fourth place from 16th. Meanwhile, Paul Jones finishing in fifth. Tommy Harradine's going to hold off Will Dodd and Shannon Mason. And other cars... Oh, Tregarthen's out of fuel. Oh no, yeah, Nathan Tregarthen. What a shame. He was um, he was doing quite well for himself up in 11th place. He might not make it to the line. No, oh, no. Not gonna, he's not going to make it. Oh, could get out and push. Oh, have a look. You can't, can't push him. Fire, he no. The rules. no, you can't do it. You can't do it, guys. Oh, well. 
someone's gonna get in trouble for that. <laughs> it's it's always nice to see a bit of comrade shit, but unfortunately the rule book states that you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Either way, Lewis Kugley giving the wall a big back. <laughs> Kugley actually ran out of fuel as well. <laughs> wow. All right then. Goodness me, a lot of drivers. Yeah,